what's happening to you is what happened to us before. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, the, that's the opinion. Yep. Yeah. All right. Which is not good. No. <laughs> no. No. Okay. No, we lost 20 years of development. The, the, the European problem is fiscal. Our problem was balance of payments. But the diagnosis made of the problem is the same. Mm -hmm. Governments are irresponsible. They spend too much. They're corrupt. They should privatize, eliminate subsidies, reduce expenditures, etc. So, it's a one-size-fits-all solution. It's the same one-size-fits-all solution that was given to us that is now being given to Europe. There is very strong parallels between what is happening in Ireland and in Greece and what uh, countries of the Global South have been experiencing for generations. And these are in uh, a number of areas. Uh, firstly, in the area of, obviously, reckless lending and borrowing has taken place in both Greece and Ireland. Um, there is a high sense of questioning the legitimacy or morality of the debt that the Irish people are having to repay, which is very similar to the questioning that happens among people of the Global South. Um, there is also a lack of information uh, among the Irish public as to who the lenders are and who the Irish people are repaying. Well, as far as we can see, there's a lot of common aspects to the problem. There's major differences, I would say, because the economic system or the economic situation in Greece is different from the Philippines and its history. But there's very common, and one of that is the way that the financial system has impacted on Greece and in the Philippines, which has a lot to do with how debt has played out in these countries. When we see this news about Europe, uh, we, go, we get very interested because uh, you know this process in South America yeah, as well as in many other southern countries has uh, costed too much for us, has costed uh, a lack of uh, dignity for people. This is not acceptable. What's the problem? The debt is the heart of the problem. It's a financial sector problem that are using the debt uh, to, to come out of their problem. But we have to distinguish what is debt and what is just financial mechanism that using, is, is using this instrument to, to come out and, and to cover the truth. Well, I think it's. I think with the current financial crisis, it is obvious that the financial system has a major problem. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think uh, that documentary film, The Inside Job, shows you how lenders are no saints. Well, actually, that's one of the important similarities between Greece and the Philippines. One of the major factors for the debt problem is the way that creditors or lenders have actively and aggressively peddled the loans to these countries. In fact, we say that at the time they were actively and aggressively pushing this in the 60s and 70s in the Philippines, they needed to lend more than we needed to borrow. And this has happened to Greece because we've also seen in the play of events that uh, the banks wanted to lend to Greece because they thought they could get more profits lending to Greece. So it was the banks exploiting the situation in Greece. So we really need to do a lot more efforts to expose this. The only way in which they can ultimately be forced to take responsibility, because they won't choose to take responsibility, the only way in which they can be forced to take responsibility is to be told that they're not going to get their money back. Or at least that they're not going to get all their money back. So in the case of, say, both Ecuador and Argentina, the, the presidents, Kirchner in Argentina, Correa in Ecuador, offered certain creditors uh, a significant discount said you can get 25, 30, 35 cents in the dollar, that's all we're going to pay you. And if you don't accept that, you're going to get nothing and you can take us to court. In all those cases, the vast majority of creditors said, okay, we'll take the 25, 30, 35, because we know 
that we're unlikely to win in the courts and we're unlikely to get anything at all unless we take what's on offer. So it's not going to be a voluntary thing by the banking sector or the financial sector. They're only going to accept their responsibilities if those responsibilities are forced upon them. Well, the Independent Debt Court is one of several ideas for setting up an international mechanism to address debt problems. Uh, there's still an ongoing discussion which is the best form, whether it's going to be a court or an arbitration mechanism which uh, could uh, put together a, an arbitration team depending on the countries involved and so on, so the composition would change each time. But I think what we all commonly say is that there has to be other mechanisms internationally to address this other than the Paris Club or the London Club or the IMF or the World Bank, which is currently the only venues for addressing the debt problem. Uh, what we suggested was the formation of uh, an international board of arbitration for sovereign debt at the UN level. So there would be an international court. And this court would be independent of all of the powers to be. And it would require debt audits before it made its decisions. But the, the, the function of the Board of Arbitration is basically to organize how much debt is owed, how much debt is manageable, reduce the, the balance, reorganize the payment schedule, and try to get a, a good interest rate for the loans. Um, and of course, make sure that all of the debts that are inside have been properly used and are not the, the problem of a, a byproduct of corruption. Um, that that is true, I think, for Latin America is also true for Europe. And it's true for everybody. So now uh, I think it's a matter that Greece uh, gets its act together and makes the proper political moves so that this happens. Uh, otherwise, uh, what's going to happen is that the lenders are going to define the future of Greece. And uh, I don't think the future of Greece should be decided by the lenders. It should be decided by an independent court. Get the truth out. That's the hardest part. Yeah. And what is owed? Who is it owed to? Why is it owed? Uh, how did we get here? Get a correct diagnosis of the problem. I think uh, the people need to ask, need to not ask, but need to demand from their government that referendums be made so that public opinion can be heard on what they think, on how the debt is being handled, and how it should be handled. And, uh, and the third thing, of course, is having debt audits. <coughs> it's very important that everybody in the country that is going to pay for that debt knows how it was hired, why it was hired, and how it benefited them. Because the usual, the usual suspect is that the population doesn't feel it got benefited from the money that was lent. First, I think the important lesson that we learn and that has been reminded to us by the financial crisis is we have to see the debt as part of a bigger picture. And that addressing the problem of the debt is not simply abolishing it or cancelling it. Unless we see the big picture and the changes that are necessary, the debt will just reaccumulate and will become a problem again. So that is, I think, the most important thing to understand because the debt itself, its particular intricacies, that's well studied. But oftentimes what is missing is locating it in the bigger picture.